Alright, so what we're planning on doing is uh, we're going to take this, uh, what should we call this? The, uh, the testicle subject, and so therefore we are going to uh, drop this. Classic Spencer right here. We read somewhere online that a can of sweet peas would blow up. And uh, we figured we're going to we're Mythbusters. We're Mythbusters. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to see if it really happens. Hi. My name is Zach, and I'm here with Spencer Kittle. And we're actually trying to decipher whether the, whether the myth is true or not. If, we, if peas stay green for life, or if they will turn black. Hence, Exhibit A. Look, the has been crashed. For those of you that are squeamish, you, not, you might want to look away. You may wish to. That's how they make baby food. My suit is not, the peas are not black. <laughs> and uh, if you like peas, like I do? I think, I think this myth is confirmed. I think the peas, well not peas everywhere. Yes. <laughs> That's quite, favorite. quite, quite. So the myth is true. If you put peas in a can, in a fire for long enough, it becomes corn. <laughs> And, uh, we have proved this. Yep. We got a time bomb. We got a time bomb. We got a time bomb. Nine, nine. Little dishes of sour cream and uh, salsa up in the tree. <laughs> and then when it bursts, it'll shake the tree loose and blah, blah, top, top yourself, son. <laughs> okay. Right. So, in theory, we will... We, I, we, my hands are tired from rolling my own burritos. <laughs> there's, got, there's got to be a better way of making a burrito. We have devised a solution to this problem. Hungry? Don't have time to, to put beans on a burrito? There's no problem. This is your solution. We're done with this problem. Beans. T tortilla. On, the, on, the, on a spit. Grilled. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a crucial part of this process, and it involves a, uh, uh, not your, not your biggest Canadian guy carrying, carrying the, uh, yeah, you may, you might ask yourself, this looks like a lot of work that you had wrong your heel. Enjoy. <laughs> so here we are, thawing out the saw, cutting up the wood, which will uh, stoke the fire, which will... Uh... It's a revolution, people. We are here to change the world, change the way that you eat your burritos. Who doesn't like burritos? By a, uh, a scientist in Mexico named San Sabar Marianos. We're just trying to improve on it. It's future, it's the time, it's now. We're going forward. Everybody knows that when you make a burrito, how much bean go goes on these burritos? Nobody knows. We're about to find out. Then let's not forget that we are in Alaska in the Arctic winter. Hey, burrito! It's going to work. If it's burritos that you love, burritos you will get. Burritos. Rolling a burrito and, and dalloping some refried beans is nearly as hard as this? Spencer? Yes? I was thinking, you know, we could cut the fingers off and, like, really live it. Live, live, live in the moment, man. But now the food is going to make itself. We have evolved beyond caveman days. Oh, hi. My name is Zach, and behind the camera is Spencer, and we are the Freeman Brothers. We're here today to show you guys how to make a burrito. Don't let the burrito get made. And most of all, don't let the burrito make you. How much beans do you need? No one knows. How much beans are, are needed? Nobody cares. And I'm not trying to steal the glory of John Juan Pablo Burrito King. 
Because he did, he did what he did, uh, we're going to do what we do. We're going to try to show you how today to make a burrito. Wait, no, we're not going to show you how to make a burrito. We're going to show a burrito how to make itself. So, behind me, you may notice we have a fire going. And behind that, you might notice this is Anchorage, Alaska. A cold, bitter climate. Uh, yes, I know. We are like seven, seven or nine continents away from Mexico, where the burrito was originally invented, if you call it invention. How much beans go on it? How many tortillas? That's it's a, it's a lot to, to, to compute, really. But here, we're going to let it decide for itself. Every action has a opposite and equivalent reaction of some sorts, I've been told. I didn't figure this out myself, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to find out right here. You might notice there are tortillas laid out. Inside here, we have a raging inferno ready to go. Right down there, can of Rosalita beans, and we wanted to give a shout out to Ros Rosalinda beans. Oh, hello again. Are you hungry? I sure am. I hope you brought your appetite because we're making bean burritos. No, actually we're not. Bean burritos are making themselves. Sizzling hot tortillas ready to go by the fire. A little bit of hickory, a little bit of smoke, and never hurt anybody. We are going. We are here today to create a bean burrito making machine that's going to burn. And mine. We don't want to be greedy with these burritos. We want the whole world to know and see how, how we want, we want to be all you burrito can be. Or something of that nature, a lot better. Hi again, this is Zach and Spencer Freeman. We are here with Rosarita beans, refried, refried. We are going to put these beans in the fire, let them burst, and let, let nature decide how much beans goes on a burrito. And uh, in, a matter of, in a matter of moments, we're going to have a delicious feast for the ages. So as I put this in there, it really doesn't matter. As long as the beans fly where they do, we're going to do it right, or we're going to try it and true. Something smells delicious. Let's go check out our feast and see how it is. The cheetahs are gone. Oh, there they are. Mm. Delicious. I hope you enjoy our burritos. I know I enjoyed making them. If your taste buds are channelized, I know mine are. Yum yums. Enjoy.